Welcome back to lecture two of mod eight uh, for elements of statistics with Mrs. Boland with the University of West Florida. Today we're going to continue on with our hypothesis testing uh, lecture series and today we're going to learn about the p-value as well as how to conduct hypothesis testing with a t-distribution and with proportions. So let's get started. Hopefully um, you were able to do a little bit of homework and tackle a little bit of the um, homework for Mod 8, which may have helped solidify some of what was taught in the last lecture. It's a lot of information and really the best way to get good at it is to do lots of practice. So um, we're going to jump right in uh, talking about what's called the p-value. The p-value is the smallest significant level at which the null hypothesis is rejected. So using the p-value approach, we will reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than alpha, okay? And we do not reject the p-value or the null hypothesis if the p-value is greater than alpha. This is just a slightly different technique. Instead of drawing um, uh, a table and looking at your critical value, uh, you can just, uh, in, in coming up with your uh, critical value, you can just use your uh, significant level that you're given to begin with and then figure out your p-value based off of your test statistic. Compare your p-value to your alpha level and then conclude whether or not you can reject or whether you fail to reject. So let's look at an example. So the management of a priority health club claims that its members lose on average 10 pounds or more within the first month after joining the club. A consumer agency wants to check to see if the claim, uh, wants to check this claim. So they took a random sample of 36 members at this health club and found that they had lost an average of 9.2 pounds within the first month. Use the population standard deviation of 2.4 pounds to, and uh, we're going to find the p-value for this test. Okay, we're actually going to go ahead and conduct a statistical study on this all the way through using the information that was provided. So it says, uh, first off, let's just go and write down some information. So the health club says that mu, so the health club says that mu is equal to 10. Um, the consumer agency took a random sample of 36 people, so that would be N is equal to 36. And um, they found that X bar is equal to 9.2. Uh, and then we found that the standard deviation is equal to 2.4. And the first thing we're going to do is just look at uh, calculating calculating the p-value, but I do want to also say, let's just say that we're going to let alpha for the sake of conversation equal uh, 0 0.10, okay? So we're gonna test this at a 90% confidence level is what we're looking at. So let's state the null and the alternative hypothesis. I want you to write those down first before I write them down to kind of test how you did and how much you remember from the last uh, class. So I'm going to give you just a moment. So I always like to take and write down my alternative hypothesis to begin with. And it says that the health club claims that on average people lose 10 pounds or more within the first month. And the consumer agency wants to test that. So they're going to try to prove, in essence, that mu is less than 10 pounds. We're gonna test that claim, and the only thing they can prove is if it's you know, false, so otherwise it's fine if it's true. And so we're gonna say in that case that the null hypothesis is that they do lose 10 pounds or more. So that is the null hypothesis. If you got this right, send me the code word ROSE, R-O-S-E, so if you got the null and the alternative hypothesis correct, send me the code word rose. Now it says select the distribution 
to use. So we have our sigma. So this is going to be a Z distribution. Okay. If you knew that before I said it, send me the code word tulip. Okay. T U L I P S. Okay. For tulips. Now it says calculate the P value and make a decision. So we're going to go ahead and draw a picture, just a little picture here. We're going to look, we're going to put zero on here. Okay. And we know it's a left tell test, don't we? Because right there we're pointing to the left. And so we're going to put over here, fail to reject. And then right in here is where we're going to put alpha. Okay. We would put point 1, 0, which is where we would put alpha and this is our reject. Okay. And I'm not going to look up the critical value right now. The reason I'm not looking it up is because we're going to do this test strictly off of the P value. Okay. So I'm just going to put, oops, I want that in green, negative Z star. We just know it's right there. Okay. Um, and we can go ahead and look that up real quick. Let's just go ahead and look that up. So 0.1 on our table. So we're going to look for 0.1 here. So it's going to be 1.28. So negative 1.2 and then 8. So negative 1.28. So our critical value is equal to negative 1.2 to 8. Um, and in order to calculate our p-value, you have to have your test statistic. You just have to. So we need to calculate what our test statistic is. So z is going to be equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma divided by the square root of n. So x bar is equal to 9.2 minus 10 divided by sigma 2.4 divided by the square root of n and n was 36. Yep, 36 right there. So we're going to put this in our calculator and see what we get. So we get 9.2 minus 10 parentheses divided by parentheses 2.4 divided by the square root of 36. which is equal to negative two. So my Z is equal to negative 2.00. That is my test statistic. So my test statistic comes in here and you see my critical value is negative 1.28. So negative two is going to be right about here. Okay. So negative two is right about here. And do you see, I'm going to draw a line right here. I'm going to come in, I'm going to grab a purple highlighter right in here. And this area right in here is my p-value area. Right there is where we calculate our p-value. Here is our fail to reject area. And then in here, all the way to the tail is our rejection area, okay? And what we're saying is, is since our p-value is less than uh, our alpha value, okay, we'll show that to you in a second, we will reject our null hypothesis uh, and accept our alternative. Same thing, our test statistic is less than our critical value. Same situation. Here's how we find our p-value though, okay? So our p-value is the area under the curve to the left, going out to negative infinity, from this blue line at negative two, okay, all the way over here. This is our, this right in here is our critical value, or I'm sorry, our p-value. So to look that area up, all we have to do is look up our test statistic of negative 2.0 in our tables. This would be the tables. And we're gonna come in negative 2.00. And so our p-value is 0 0.0228, so 0 0.0228. So our p-value, p-value 
is equal to 0 0.0228. So the area under the curve right in here is actually 0 0.0228, okay? And since our p-value, 0 0.0228 is less than 0 0.10, that's our alpha level, we will reject H naught, our null hypothesis, and conclude H1, okay? And so we will conclude that the people that are joining this fitness center are not losing more than 10 pounds. They're losing less than 10 pounds in the first, what was it? Um, the first month of joining, okay? So uh, the fitness company is doing false advertisement in essence because they're saying that the people are losing more than 10 pounds, at least 10 pounds per month. The consumer agency has come in and they were able to prove that not only at a 90% confidence level that uh, they were not losing um, 10 pounds or more per month, but, we, but our p-value, which is uh, 0 0.0228, we could turn this around and say that we are 97% confident or 97.72% confident uh, that uh, people are losing less than 10 pounds per, uh, for their first month at the gym, okay? So this right here can be turned around into a confidence and we could say, in essence, that we are 97.72. 1 minus 0 0.0228 is 0.9772, multiplying that by 100%, okay? Uh, so that's our confidence level. This is important for you to understand because often uh, on like NPR and other stations like that, you will hear statistical studies cited and they will either give you an alpha level or a p-value. And the p-value is really the significance of the results, okay? This tells you, even though we did this test at a 0.1 alpha, we could have done this test at a 0.05 alpha, okay, 95% confidence level, and have been correct. Uh, we could have even done it at a 0.97, uh, or 97% were confidence level, okay, 0.97 confidence level. And, and had a successful test where we concluded the alternative was true. So, but we could not have tested at a 98 or a 99% confidence level because this is not quite strong enough for that. All right, but that's how we do it with a p-value. So let's go on and do another p-value test. So at the Canon Food Corporation, it used to take an average of 50 minutes for new workers to learn a new food processing job. Recently, the company installed a new food processing machine. The supervisor at the company wants to find if the mean time taken by the new workers to learn the food processing procedure on this new machine is different from 50 minutes. A sample of 40 workers showed that it took on average 47 minutes for them to learn the new food processing procedure on the new machine. Use a population standard deviation of seven minutes. Find the p-value for the test uh, that the mean learning time for the food processing procedure for the new machine is different from 50 minutes. Now this is a little bit different. Okay, so pay close attention. Okay, so it used to take on average 50 minutes to, for the new workers to learn a job. That would be our mu. Okay, so we're going to say mu is equal to 50 minutes. Okay, that's this part right here. And then they installed a new food processing machine. And the supervisor at the company wants to find out if the mean time uh, for new workers to learn the processing uh, on the new machine is different. So this is a two-tailed test, okay, from 50 minutes. So we did a sample of size 40. And it showed that on average it took 47 minutes. So X bar is 47 minutes okay and then we have a standard population standard deviation of seven minutes find the p-value uh, for this test okay to see if it's different than 50 minutes state our null and our alternative hypothesis 
So our alternative is that mu is different, not equal to 50 minutes. Therefore, my null is that mu is equal to 50 minutes. Okay. Select the distribution used. I have sigma, therefore z. Okay. Calculate the p-value. In order to calculate the p-value, I have to know what the test statistic is. So I'm going to draw a uh, table here. In essence, what I can say is, is that I know mean, the mean mu is 50 right here. I know that 47 is right here. The p-value is this area right in here. So this area under here is going to be the p-value. Okay, that's really what I'm going to notice right there. And I am a two-tailed test, and so I need to figure out where it's going to be in relationship on the standard normal. So I have my standard normal, my mu, I have a two-tailed test, okay, right here. I'm going to draw those in line as my critical values. I'm going to have a negative z uh, star. I'm going to have a positive z star. I didn't say what level I'm testing at. I'm just going to go based off the p-value. I'm just going to look at the p-value. But I want you to remember that if I was testing, I, were, uh, I would have alpha, and then right in here would be alpha half, right? I would put alpha half right in here, and then here I would put my fail to reject, okay? And then I would put fail to reject in here, and uh, we would also have a red right through here, because we have a two-tail test. We'll just kind of plot that in right that. Okay, so you don't forget it's a two-tailed test. Very, very important to remember that this is a two-tailed test. So to calculate the p-value, uh, we need to know what our test statistic is. And our test statistic is going to look like this. So it's going to be t is going to be equal to 47 minus 50 divided by 7 Divide it by, what was my n? 40. The square root of 40. So we're going to grab our calculator, and we're going to throw this in our calculator very quickly. And so it's 47 minus 50 divided by 7 divided by the square root of 40. And I find that that is equal to negative 2.71. So this is equal to negative 2. 0.71. So I'm going to find out that my z is over here at negative 2.71. Okay. And I'm going to, to help us out a little bit, I'm going to again just say, let's let alpha equal 0 0.10. Okay. 0 0.10. Just because it's good to have those values down. And so uh, at point uh, zero at point one. If alpha is point one, half alpha right here is point zero five, right? Okay, so that would mean then that my z values at point zero five, oops, is going to be negative one point six four five. Um, negative one point six four five. Uh, I will use negative 1.65 since that is what web work is currently requiring. So we will put negative 1.65 and then this one here would be positive 1.65. Alrighty, so now I can know where to draw in my test statistic, which will be right in here at negative 2.71. So if my uh, test statistic is right here, you can see then that this area under here, okay, is where my p-value is going to be. Right in here is my p-value. But because it's a two-tail test, I have to double it. I have to put the same area under here also, okay? 
at positive 2.71, okay? So I have to look at both of that and double it. So let's look up in our tables 2.71, 2.71, 1. So it's 0 0.0034. 0 0.0034. So I would say then that the probability that z is less than negative 2.71 is equal to 0 0.0034. That is how much area is under here. But because I'm calculating my p-value, you multiply your p the area under the curve here by two, by the number of tails that you have. And so my p-value is actually going to be equal to two times 0 0.0034, which is going to be equal to 0 0.0068, because I have to take the area on the right area and on the left. You have to double it because it is a two-tailed test. You must double the area because it's a two-tailed test. So when you're looking up your p-value, just remember, multiply the area that you look up, this area, by the number of tails in the test. If it's a one-tailed test, then it's that area. If it's a two-tailed test, then it's going to be double that area. So that's how you can uh, uh, look at that. So to make a decision, if we have alpha is equal to 0 0.1, uh, since our p-value, which is equal to 0 0.06 uh, or 0 0.0068, is less than our alpha, which would be 0 0.0068, is less than 0 0.10, we reject H0 and conclude The alternative hypothesis h sub 1 okay so uh, again when we're looking at the p-value and uh, what you have to look at is the p-value compared to the alpha but to calculate the p-value for a two-tailed test you must multiply it by 2 in order to get the accurate p-value so since 0 0.0068 is less than 0 0.1 we're going to reject h0 and conclude h1 Okay, and our p-value is 0 0.0068. Let's look at another one. Ah, okay, that was the last one for our p-value there. So conditions under which the t-distribution is used to make test of the hypothesis about mu. So first, the population from which the sample is drawn is approximately normal. And two, the population standard deviation sigma is unknown. We're going to have to use our sample standard deviation to approximate our population standard deviation because uh, the population standard deviation is not known. Our test statistic is the value of the test statistic t for the sample mean x bar is computed as t is equal to x bar minus mu divided by the standard error about the mean, which is equal to s divided by the square root of n. The value of t calculated by x bar by using the above formula is also called the observed value of t. Okay, so the observed value of t or the test statistic for t. Okay. Looking at our first uh, problem here. So a psychiatrist or a psychologist claims that the mean at age at which children start walking is 12.5 months, okay? The mean age. Carol wanted to check if this claim is true. She took a random sample of 18 children and found that the mean age at which these children started walking was 12.9 with a standard deviation of 0.8. So, she took a random sample of 18 children and found that the random sample yielded a mean age of 12.9 months and a sample yielded the standard deviation of 0.8 months. Using a 1% significant level, can you conclude that the mean age at which all children start walking is different than 12.5 months? Assume the ages at which the children start walking have an approximate normal distribution. 
very important. Okay, so let's write down everything that we learned here. We learned that mu is 12.5 months right here, okay? We know that she took a random sample of 18 children, so n is equal to 18. And from that, we found that we have a sample standard deviation, x bar, is equal to 12.9 months. And that our standard deviation, s, is equal to 0.8 months. Uh, we're going to test at alpha is equal to 0 0.01. And we're going to be looking for a difference, OK? And that should be about everything that we want to know. So first, uh, state the null and the alternative hypothesis. So the alternative is that mu does not equal 12.5 because we want to check to see if it is different. OK, so whether it's greater than or less than, I don't care. It's different. Then here we have mu is equal to 12.5. And then we should put down months. Select the distribution to use. I have S. So since I have the sample standard deviation, sample standard deviation, I'm going to use a T distribution. OK? And now I'm going to use the uh, do the critical value. My critical value is a little bit different for our t, OK? So my critical value for t is going to be uh, alpha is 0 0.01. It's a, OK, so we're going to come over and look at the UWF t tables. And remember, we said before that we were not going to use this top row or the second row for mod 7, but we would use it in mod 8. We're now here in mod 8, and so the two-telled area, uh, we're going to be doing a two-telled test. If you come back over and you look, we're right here. We have a do not equal sign, so we have a two-telled test. And our alpha is equal to 0.01. And so the UWF tables are set up so that you don't actually have to take half of alpha. They've kind of already have already done that for you. So you're going to come in and you're going to look up your alpha level, which is 0 0.01, 0 0.01 for a two-tailed test, OK? So they, they've done that math for you. Most um, t-tables do not do this for you. So most t-tables, you just have to know how to use your alpha, OK? But just make sure you understand that for at UWF, we've done the math for you, so you don't have to understand or do the calculations for half alpha. So use your two-tailed area, and this is going to be actual alpha. So on your uh, t-tables, feel free to put down a note somewhere that says that this is alpha, OK? And so our alpha is 0 0.01, which you can see corresponds with half alpha right up here. That would be uh, if we were taking half of it. And we're going to come into 17 degrees of freedom. So let me scroll up just a little bit. So now we have a two-tailed test at 0 0.01 and we're going to come down to 17 degrees of freedom which is this number right here 2.898 so it corresponds with 17 degrees of freedom at 2.898 so right here is 2.898 8, okay, so they have you put down here actually half of alpha. So let's go ahead and change that notation from our confidence coefficient to uh, alpha, not half alpha, but alpha. And they have you put down 0 0.01. So they have you put down alpha, not half alpha, and it is at uh, 17 degrees freedom. So our critical value is 2.898. So now we're going to draw our picture. We're going to come in and we're going to put zero in the center, which represents our mu. And then we're going to come in and put our critical values, which will be a negative 2.898. It's symmetrical. We're doing a two-tailed test. We have a positive and we have a negative. And we're going to put right here, fail to reject. 
and then in here we're going to put reject okay and reject those are our rejection areas and we're going to put those in here there we go so that is a picture of our rejection region and our fail to reject area now we're going to calculate our test statistic remember that we are on a t distribution so we're going to calculate a t and it is x bar minus mu divided by s that's an s it didn't look like an s so let's make it look like an s divided by the square root of n so our x bar is 12.9 to 12.5 so 12.9 minus 12.5 divided by s which is um, 0 0.8 0 0.8 divided by the square root of 18 and we're going to throw that on our calculator and we're going to find out that clear that out so we're going to get uh, 12 Point nine minus twelve point five parentheses divided by parentheses point eight divided by uh, the square root of eighteen come out close equals so that's two point two or I'm sorry two point one two one so one two one so 2.121 and now we're going to come up and we're going to plot that and that's going to end up right in here so it's 2.121 and you're going to find out that we are in the fail to reject so fail to reject h naught at alpha equals point zero one okay so I'm going to fail to reject H naught uh, which is that uh, I cannot prove that it that uh, the amount of time it takes for a child to learn how to walk is different than 12.5 months even though 12.9 sounds seems like it's a lot larger uh, it's not statistically significant different at the point zero one alpha level now if I wanted to look at the p-value for this what I would do is I would come in here oops wrong one let's get the right chart so we would come right in here and at the 17 degrees of freedom I would look for uh, our test statistic so our test statistic was 2.121 so we come in here at 17 degrees of freedom and I would find that 2.121 is bound between these two values. So 2.121 is larger than the 2.11, but yet smaller than 2.567. So it's bound between this interval. So then I would come up and again at the two-tailed test, and I would say that alpha is between, I'm sorry, the p-value is between 0 0.05 and 0 0.02. That's all I could say about my p-value is that it is bound between 0 0.05 and 0 0.02. Again, the way I did that is I took my test statistic, okay? And I took my test statistic and I came in here for 17 degrees of freedom. You had to compare on the exact same number of degrees of freedom. And my test statistic was 2.121 which is greater than this number and smaller than this number. So I find what two numbers surround, okay, what number is smaller and what number is bigger than my test statistic. Once I find that interval, it wasn't here, and it wasn't down here, and it wasn't up here. It was right here. 2.121 fell between these two numbers at 17 degrees of freedom, okay? And then I come up, and because it's a two-tailed test, I'm on the middle row, 
and I said that my p-value is between 0 0.05 and 0 0.02. That's all I can say about my p-value. Okay, and I can write that down here. And my p-value is, okay, so I can go point, uh, 0 0.02 is less than my p-value, which is less than 0 0.05 okay that's all I can do you're gonna notice that I swapped the order around because that's what I have to do 0 0.02 is less than 0 0.05 okay so I put my p-value between those two numbers coming back in here so 0 0.05 is here 0 0.02 I have to switch the order around when I write it uh, with less than signs like that okay so my p-value is bound between those two that's all I can say so I failed to reject and my p-value is going to be somewhere between 0 0.02 and 0 0.05 let's look at the next one it says Grand Auto Corporation produces auto batteries the company claims that it's top of the line never die batteries are good on average for at least 65 months a consumer protection agency tested 15 such batteries to check this claim. It found that the mean life of the 15 batteries to be 63 months with a standard deviation of 2 months. At a 5% significant level, can you conclude that the company's claim is true? Assume that the mean, assume that the life of such batteries has an approximate normal distribution. So here we go. Let's highlight everything of interest uh, that was provided for us as we read through the problem. So the company claims that its top line is, on, is good on average for at least 65 months. A consumer protection agency tested 15 such batteries to check this claim, that's N. I, it found that the mean life of the 15 batteries to be 63 months with a standard deviation of two months check at a 5% significant level to see if you can if you can conclude that the claim of the company is true okay so here we go it says that it's going to be good for at least 65 months so we're going to test the opposite of that so we're going to say that h1 is that mu is less than 65 months and H naught is that mu is greater or equal to 65 months, okay? And then N was 15. We tested 15 batteries. And of those 15 batteries, we found that the average X bar was 63 months. And we found the standard deviation to be two months. We're going to test at an alpha of 0 0.05. Notice that this is a one-tailed test. One-tail test. And it's going to be the left tail because we're pointing to the left. It says, what distribution am I going to use? Well, since I have S, I have S. Therefore, I'm going to use a T distribution. Determine my critical value. My sample size is 15. My alpha is 0 0.01, so it's going to be 0.0, I'm sorry, 0 0.05. And uh, N was 15, so my degrees of freedom is 14. So 14, so my critical value is going to be alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Remember that we have a one tail test and that our um, degrees of freedom are 14. So we're going to come over here and remember UWF does the math for you so you don't have to worry about it. So remember one tail test, alpha is 0 0.05 and you're going to come down over here to degrees of freedom to being 14 and you're going to intersect those two, the uh, column and the row, and you're going to find out that your critical value is 1.761. So 1.761. 1.761. Now we're going to go ahead and draw a picture of what this represents. Critical value over here. And this is actually going to be a negative, okay, because it's a left tail test. So it's going to be negative 1.761. And we're going to put fail to reject right here. And then all of alpha, which is 0 0.05, goes right here. And this is our reject. 
is right in there. And so if we're going to highlight, we'll make this all green in here, and then pink in here for our rejecting area. Okay, now we need to calculate our test statistic. And uh, I'm going to pause the video for just a second. I'm going to scroll actually back up here for just a minute. I'm not going to pause. You're going to pause. I'm going to say pause the video and see if you can go ahead and calculate the test statistic. Push play when you're done, and we'll see if you got the right answer. I'll see you back in a moment. Did you get negative 3.87? You could take it out to three decimal places, which would be then another three. Okay, since our T statistic is to three decimals, it's a good idea to go ahead and go to three decimal places on your test statistic. So we'll go ahead and plot this on here, and we will have negative 3.837, and you'll see that we are in the rejection region, and so that we will be able to um, say that the batteries uh, last less amount of time than is advertised. And we are 95% confident of that information. Let me go ahead and write, type up our decision. Here is the write-up for our decision. So since negative 3.873 is less than negative 1.7, 6.1, we will reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is sufficient statistical evidence at alpha equal to 2.05 to conclude that the mean life of these batteries is less than 65 months. The p-value is going to be bound between 0 0.0005 and 0 0.005. So that is our conclusion. So if you got the test statistic right and the conclusion right and or the conclusion right any of it right send me the code word pink p-i-n-k and if you got it wrong i would like you to send me the code word red r-e-d so that way i know if you got this one right or wrong and at least that you tried it so good job okay let's do another one it says the management of a Massachusetts savings bank is always concerned about the quality of service provided to its customers. With the old computer system, a teller at the bank could serve on average 22 customers per hour. The management noticed that this serv at this service rate, the waiting time for customers was too long. Recently, the management of the bank installed a new computer system in the bank, expecting that it would increase the service rate and consequently make the customers happier by reducing the waiting time. To check if the new computer system is more effective than the old system, the management of the bank took a random sample of 18 hours and found during these hours the mean number of customers surveyed by the tellers was 28 per hour with a standard deviation of 2.5. Test at a 1% significant level, would you conclude that the new computer system is more effective than the old system? Assume that the number of customers served per hour by the teller uh, on the computer system has an approximate normal distribution. I'm going to quietly start to highlight what's important and quietly just kind of start solving the problem. And I suggest that you just go ahead and push pause and see if you can figure this one out all the way by yourself. This would just be a really good opportunity for you to test your understanding since we've already done one complete lecture on hypothesis testing and the similar similarities between the Z and the T are so strong. So please go ahead and pause this and I'm going to go ahead and solve it uh, also and then I'll push play again to record when I'm back to uh, walk everybody through to see if you got the right answer or not. Okay, I'll see you back in a few minutes. Welcome back. How'd you do? Uh, did you get that uh, your T is equal to 10.182? And did you get your conclusion correct, that you should indeed reject the null hypothesis and conclude the alternative that the mean time or the mean number of customers the teller can get through the line is greater than 22 people per hour. So hopefully you got this right. If you did, I would love for you to send me the code word grape. And if you got it wrong, send me the code word grapefruit. So grape, if you got it right, grapefruit, if you got it wrong. Alrighty, now we're gonna move on to a new concept. I'm glad you're watching this. Not everybody is, obviously, and so uh, the students that are watching my videos, I know will do much better on my exams coming up than the ones who did not. So thank you for taking time out of your day to attend college and, and attend class. So, all right, here we go. 
We're going to be talking now about hypothesis test of, of the population proportion with large sample. And a large sample for the population proportion is defined as your sample size times p and your sample size times q. Both have to be greater than 5. When that happens, then we are defining the proportion or to be the test to be about a large proportion or large sample. So the value of the test statistic z, remember when we're talking about proportion, we always are on a z distribution, okay? So the value of the test statistic from a sample proportion p hat is computed as z is equal to p hat minus p divided by the uh, standard error about the proportion, which is given as the square root of p times q divided by n. Remember that q is equal to 1 minus p and that p plus q must equal 1. So the value of z calculated for p hat using the above uh, formula is also called the observed value of z, the test statistic. So the observed value or the test statistic of z. Alrighty, so let's get started on a new variation here of a similar topic here. So according to the Information Research Inc, based on the sales of teeth cleaning products, in supermarkets and drugstores during a period from October 1991 to September 1992, Crest Toothpaste controlled 31.2% of the share of the market. For convenience, let's assume that 31.2% of the market share means that 31.2% of all people, that's the key part right there, of the U.S. use Crest Toothpaste. A researcher from a rival company hmm, wants to find whether or not the current market share controlled by Crest is different from 31.2%. She took a sample of 400 persons and found that 29% of them use Crest toothpaste. Using 0.01 alpha uh, significant level, can you conclude that the current market share of Crest toothpaste is different than for 1991-1992? Okay, so here we go. We highlighted a lot of the important information as we read through. And what we need to make sure we write down is that we sampled 400. So now we know that N is equal to 400. We know that P hat is 29% because she took a sample of 400 and she found that 29% of them use Crest toothpaste. So that's the new information. P hat is equal to 0.29 and then alpha is equal to 0.01. That's from right here. We're going to be doing a two-tailed test because we have the word different and we know that P is equal to 0.312 and that comes from up here. So state the null and the alternative hypothesis. And so our alternative hypothesis is that P does not equal 0.312. And then the uh, null is the opposite, which is P does equal 0.312. So this is what we've known. We know from past experience that Crest has 0.312 uh, proportion of the population as consumers or their favorite, uh, that's what they use is, is Crest. But they've got that much a corner of the market and we want to find out if that has changed, okay? So we don't know, we're not saying whether it's gone up or down, we just want to know if it's different, if it has changed, okay? So select the distribution to use. Since we're using proportion, we're going to be on a Z distribution. Now it says determine the critical value. Again, the critical value is going to be based off of our picture a little bit. So let's go ahead and draw our picture that represents our scenario with our mean in the center. We're going to have a negative Z value and we're going to have a positive Z value because it is a two-tailed test. Okay, so we have a positive and a negative. Alpha is equal to 0 0.01, so that's going to be a 99% confidence. So we're going to have 0 0.99 in here, and this is our fail to reject area. And we can go ahead and just highlight that green because this is where we're not going to reject 
and then in here is our reject and we're going to put half alpha so that's 0 0.005 and 0 0.005 I made it bigger because I had more numbers to write even though the area underneath is smaller so if you're wondering why I made it larger it's because I can't put that many numbers in a teeny tiny space and I want it to be legible so that everybody here can read it okay so we have a two-tailed test and we need to find our critical values and our area under the curve is 0 0.005 because it has half of alpha alpha is 0 0.01 half of alpha here half of alpha here so we're going to come in here and we're going to look up point whoops that's the t we want the z we're going to come in here and we're going to look up 0 0.005 so 0 0.005 is going to be between negative 2.57 and 2.58. So instead of using negative 2.575, which is the accurate value to use, we'll use what web work is expecting, which is negative 2.58. So negative 2.58 is what we're going to put right here. So here is negative 2.58 and then the positive on the other side, which is 2.58 because it is symmetrical. We know that those are our critical values. Alrighty, so our critical value is positive and negative 2.58. So Z is equal to positive and negative 2.58. Now it says calculate our test statistic. And that's going to be the new part that's a little bit hard. We're going to come right back up here to uh, our formulas. And it's going to be Z is going to be equal to P hat minus P divided by the square root of PQ uh, divided by N. Notice that this is PQ, not P hat and Q hat. Okay, this is PQ. And if we come over here, we can find this on our uh table for hypothesis testing and it is right here it's p hat minus p divided by the square root of p times q divided by n okay so there is your formula on your formula sheet so coming back over here we're just going to standardize uh, our proportion and that's going to be our test statistic so z is going to be equal to p hat minus p divided by the square root of pq divided by n and so that's going to be equal to um, p hat is 0.29 so it's 0.29 minus 0 0.312 divided by the square root of 312 times 1 minus 0.312 which is Q divided by N which was 400 divided by 400 and all of that's underneath the radical and we're going to put that in over here and we're going to have a numerator of 0.29 minus 0.312 close our parentheses divide it by the square root and then I can just simply go 0.312 times and I can go and just put 1 minus oops, maybe I can put minus minus 0.312 I could have calculated it out ahead of time just put the value in or I can put it in like that and then divide by 400 and all of that you'll see is underneath the radical so now when I click this I'm no longer underneath the radical and now I hit enter and so I get negative 0.949 so I'm going to make this a negative 0.95 negative 0.95 And now when I plot that on here, that's going to be right in here somewhere. So negative 0.95. So you can see that I'm going to fail to reject. So it'll be something along the lines that since uh, negative 0.95 is greater than negative 0.258, 
uh, and less than 2.58, we will fail to reject our null hypothesis and conclude and fail to conclude that the proportion is not different. So we fail to conclude that the proportion is different than 31.2%. So let me pause this and type this up for you. Okay, and here's how I could write up my decision. Since negative 2.58 is less than negative 0.95, which is less than 2.58, in other words, that tells you that it's a two-tailed test, I fail to reject the null hypothesis at alpha equals 0 0.01 that the Crest market share is different than 31.2%. Okay, let's mosey on over to our next problem. It says, when working properly, a machine that is used to make chips for calculators does not produce more than a 4% detective defective chip. Whenever the machine produces more than 4% defective chip, it needs an adjustment. To check if the machine is working properly, the quality control department at the company often takes samples of chips and inspects them to determine if they are good or defective. Once such random samples of 200 chips is taken uh, recently from a production line containing 14 de defective chips, test at a 5% significant level whether or not the machine needs an adjustment. Okay, let's highlight everything that we know and tackle this problem to the best of our ability. First thing we want to look at is when the machine is working properly, calculators does not produce more than a 4% defective. So that's when things are good. Whenever a machine produces more than 4% defective, it needs an adjustment. So when we have this scenario going on, we have a problem. To check if a machine is working properly, the quality control department of the company often takes samples of chips and inspects them to determine if they are good or defective. Once a random sample was taken of 200 chips and uh, we found that it contained 14 defective chips. Notice that it says 14 defective chips, not 14% of defective chips. Test at a 5% significant level whether or not the machine needs an adjustment. So either it's going to need an adjustment or it's not going to need an adjustment. So let's write down everything that we learned. The first thing that we learned is that we had a sample size of 200. And when we did 200, we found that we're going to put down that uh, 14 of them. So that's X. We're going to let X be the ones that are defective. So let X denote defective chips because that's what we're studying, okay? And then P hat is X divided by N. It's the number of defective chips divided by the total number of chips we surveyed or we sampled. So we had 14 chips out of 200 that were defective. So that's gonna give us a P hat of 0 0.07. We know that when P is, is at four or less that we are in good shape. So we're gonna define then as P is equal to 0 0.04. So it says state the null and the alternative hypothesis. Well, we need to know when the problem occurs, and that would be that P is greater than 0 0.04. So as long as P is less than or equal to 0 0.04, we're in good shape and we're not looking for a problem. So that's our null hypothesis and our alternative. We're gonna to test to see if when we did this sample here, if this is significantly more than this, okay? Is 0 0.07 statistically significantly more than 0 0.04? The distribution that we're going to use is a Z distribution because whenever we do a, a proportion test, we always use the Z distribution. Next, it says determine our critical value. Well, our alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Oh, my computer is hot. Are you watching everything disappear right there? 0 0.05. And so um, it's a one tail test. And so all of alpha will go in the right hand tail because our greater than sign is showing us that the tail that we're interested in is to the right. So let's come on over here real quick and we will draw picture of the situation and we will put right over here our Z and point in point 95 in here and right in here we're going to put point 0 0.05. So our alpha level 
is 0 0.05, so that's going to go right in here. And as always, 0 0.05 plus 0.95 adds up to 100% of the space underneath the curve, which is very important. Here is our fail to reject area. Reject area, and then here is our reject right in here. And so we'll go ahead and highlight this as green. And then here is, and we need to go ahead and solve for our Z value. Okay, so let's pull up our Z value, 0 0.05. And that means that our left area to the left is 0.95. So we can come right in here and we can look for 0.95. 0.95 is going to be between these two values right here. So it's 1.645, but we'll just use 1.65. 1 1.65 for our Z. And that's our picture so far. It says calculate our test statistic. So to calculate our test statistic, it's going to be T is going to be equal to P hat minus P divided by the square root of PQ divided by N. So here we go. So P hat is going to be equal to 0 0.07, P is 0 0.04. So it's going to be 0 0.07, subtract 0 0.04, divide it by the square root of 0 0.04 times 0.96, divide it by the square root of N, and we're going to put this in our calculator and it will look like this when we do. We're going to turn this on, we'll hit clear and we'll go 0 0.07 minus 0 0.04 parentheses divided by taking the square root of 0 0.04 times 0.96, that's Q divide it by 200 and that is equal to 2.165 so I'll make that 2.17 2.17 so we'll go ahead and plot this right over here it's going to be right in here 2.17 and so you can see that we fall in the rejection region so therefore we will reject H not and conclude that uh, the machine need, was out of adjustment and needed to be stopped and recalibrated to continue manufacturing. Let me go ahead and type this up for our answer. So here is our decision. Since 2.17 is greater than 1.65, I will reject the null hypothesis and conclude with alpha equal to 0 0.05 that the machine producing the calculator chips needs to be recalibrated. The p-value is 0 0.015. Uh, I did not show you how to look up the p-value for this one, but you should know how. Um, please pause the video, take a moment, make sure you get the same p-value. And uh, if you do, send me the code word pinecone. And if you make a mistake and you do not get the same uh, uh, p-value, please send me uh, the code word pine tree. Okay, so there you go. Those are your code words. Let's move on to the next problem, which I think, yep, is our last one for the day. So we've almost made it to the end. So here we go. A direct mailing company sells computers and computer parts by mail. The company claims that at least 90% of all orders are mailed within 72 hours after they are received. The quality control department at the company often takes samples to check if this claim is true. A recent taken sample of 150 orders showed that 129 of, of the orders were mailed within 72 hours. Do you think the company's claim is true? Use a 2.5% significant level, solve, you know, test the hypothesis. So I'm just gonna say, since this is our last one of the day, two things. One, go ahead and pause the video after I get done speaking here to see if you can solve this on your own. It would be great if you do. So go ahead and hit pause and solve this on your own and I'll see you back in a few moments. Okay, here's our final decision. Because 
one point, negative 1.96 is less than negative 1.63. We fail to reject our null hypothesis. Therefore, we cannot conclude that it takes longer than 72 hours to mail a package to the direct, from the direct mailing company. Okay, so as we go through, we gathered the information that we were given. It claims that at least 90% of all orders are mailed within 72 hours. And it says, do you think the company's claim is true? So I'm gonna test that it's not true. So it's gonna be that mu is less than 0.9 because 90% is going to be 0.9. Okay, so we're going to test that. And in order to do that, I took a sample of 150. So that gave me an N of 150. And it showed that 129 packages were indeed mailed within the 72 hours. I let X be defined as my variable that the package was mailed within 72 hours. I had 129 packages mailed within 72 hours. So that meant X equals 129 p hat my estimate for the ratio then is x divided by n so that's 129 divided by 150 which equals 0.86 and it said use a 2.5 significant level which when you multiply through or divide through rather by 100 is 0 0.025 as your alpha level okay moving your decimal place over two to the left Alrighty, so here's our null hypothesis and our alternative. Again, we were testing that uh, the see if the company's claim is true, and we're going to assume it's true unless we have enough statistical evidence to prove that it is not true. Because it is a z, uh, a proportion test, we will be on the z distribution, and our critical value is determined by our alpha value, which was 0 0.025. And uh, we put 0 0.025 in the left tail. It was the left tail because remember, uh, we go back to our alternative hypothesis and it points to the left. Therefore, we know that we have a left tail test right here. And 0 0.025 plus 0.975 must add up to one underneath the curve. So this is my fail to reject area. Here's my rejection zone. My critical value is at 1.96, which we looked up in the tables. My test statistic is equal to 0.86, which was p hat minus 0.9 divided by the square root of 0.9 times 0.10. That's p, that's q, divided by 150. That was what with my sample size. Throw that in your calculator and you get negative 1.63, which we plot right over here. And you can see that it is in the fail to reject area. Therefore, I know I'm going to fail to reject my null hypothesis. So because negative 1.96 is less than negative 1.63, I will fail to reject the null hypothesis at a 0 0.025 alpha level. Thus, I cannot conclude that it takes longer than 72 hours to mail a package from direct mailing company. And that is it for right now. Again, I wanna make sure that everybody is listening. If you got this problem right, I would like you to email me the code word teacup and if you got this problem wrong even in a small small spot i want you to email me the code word coffee mug okay and for coffee cup whichever you want so those will be our code words on how you did on this last problem again i want to encourage everybody here to continue to do great you made it to the end of video so high five and let's see here orange bell pepper there we go orange bell pepper will be our code word that you made it to the end of the video so high five i'll see you later take care